subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia News Line. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 22nd of February. India begins shipment of wheat to Afghanistan via Pakistan. PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto offers PMLN to pick Pakistan Prime Minister if no trust move succeeds. And parts of Sri Lanka run out of petrol amid foreign exchange crisis. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday addressed a rally in pole-bound northeastern Manipur state and pitched his ruling Bharatiya Janata Party's development agenda while blaming the previous governments for neglecting the region. He said that the work done by his double-engine government has laid the foundation for the development of Manipur over the next 25 years. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said that the work done by his ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party's double-engine government, has laid the foundation for the development of the northeastern Manipur state over the next 25 years. Addressing a rally in pole-bound Manipur, the Prime Minister took a dig at main opposition Congress and said it never worked on improving connectivity in the region. He said Manipur will become an important centre for East Asia connectivity after the highway connecting Myanmar Thailand is completed. He said the BJP government has also made impossible possible as Manipur has also got relief from frequent blockade protests. Aapne BJP ki good governance ko bhi dekha hai aur गुड इंटेंशन को भी देखा है बीते पांच साल में हमने जो मेहनत की उसने आने वाले 25 सालों की एक ठोस मजबूत नींव बनाई है मणिपुर विल गो टू पोल्स इन टू फेजेस ऑन फेब्रुवरी 28 एंड 5th ऑफ मार्च Earlier this month, assembly elections were also held in Punjab, Goa and Uttarakhand states and seven-phased polling is underway in Uttar Pradesh. The counting of votes in all five states will be conducted on March 10. And India on Tuesday sent the first consignment of wheat assistance for the people of Afghanistan via the Atari Waga border, the road checkpoint between India and Pakistan in northern Punjab state. The first convoy of 50 trucks carrying 2,500 metric tons of wheat was flagged off by India's Foreign Secretary Harshvardhan Shringla in the presence of Afghanistan's ambassador to India, Farid Mamunzeh, and representatives of the UN agency World Food Programme, which will distribute the aid. Pakistan will allow India to use its territory to transport a total of 50,000 metric tons of wheat and life-saving medicines to Afghanistan, officials said. It marks a response to the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan where poverty and hunger has spiraled since the Taliban took power last year. The Taliban-led administration has been using wheat as a payment for thousands of government workers, mostly labourers, as the country's financial crisis intensifies. This consignment, as you are aware, will go from integrated check post in Atari to Jalalabad in Afghanistan, where it will be delivered to the World Food Program, which will arrange further dissemination of this consignment. And the Embassy of India and Ukraine in a fresh advisory has asked Indian students to return home in the interest of their safety amid deepening Ukraine-Russia crisis following Moscow's recognition of independence of separatist regions in eastern Ukraine. At the UNSC briefing on developments in Ukraine, India strongly emphasized the need for all sides to exercise the utmost restraint and intensify diplomatic efforts to ensure mutually amicable solution.
The Indian embassy in Kiev on Tuesday again advised students to temporarily leave Ukraine rather than wait for an official confirmation from universities amid the growing tensions in the region. The embassy in a separate tweet informed that four flights from Kiev to Indian capital New Delhi will operate till March 6 in order to evacuate Indian nationals in view of the continued high level of tensions in Ukraine. Tensions rose dramatically after Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the sending of Russian armed forces to Ukraine breakaway regions after recognizing their independence in his address to the nation on Monday. The United Nations also held an emergency security council meeting to discuss the deepening Ukraine-Russia crisis following Moscow's move. India's permanent representative to the United Nations TS Tirumurthy earlier expressed concern about the safety and security of civilians there and said that more than 20,000 Indian students and nationals live and study in different parts of Ukraine. India strongly emphasized the need for all sides to exercise the utmost restraint and intensify diplomatic efforts to ensure for a mutually amicable solution. The escalation of tension along the border of Ukraine with the Russian Federation is a matter of deep concern. These developments have the potential to undermine peace and security of the region. We call for restraint on all sides. The immediate priority is de-escalation of tensions, taking into account the legitimate security interests of all countries and aimed towards securing long-term peace and stability in the region and beyond. We are convinced that this issue can only be resolved through diplomatic dialogue. Meanwhile, the Tata Group owned Air India's Delhi Cape flight, which was the first of the three flights to bring back Indian nationals from Ukraine, is all set to land in the national capital tonight. Boeing 787 Dreamliner can accommodate more than 200 passengers. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has offered the PMLN party the Prime Minister's slot in case the joint opposition's move for a no-trust motion is successful in the parliament. The PMLN, however, said the issue was not who would be the next Prime Minister, as the incumbent's ouster will lead to fresh polls. Opposition PPP Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Monday offered the PMLN party the prime minister slot in case the opposition's move for a no trust motion is successful this comes as Maulana Fazlur Rahman the chief of multi party opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement met PPP co chairman Asif Ali Zardari on Monday to discuss a strategy to topple prime minister Imran Khan's government through a no confidence motion the Muslim League न्यूज नून का पार्लियामान में मेजॉरिटी है अक्सरियत है और उनका हक होगा कि वो अपना वजीर आजम का उम्मीदवार नामजद करे जब इन शाह ऑपोजिशन कामयाब हो अदम एतम लेकर आते हैं The PMLN was quick to respond with senior leader Ehsan Iqbal saying the issue was not who would be the next prime minister as the incumbent's ouster will become a bridge for fresh polls local media reported the opposition PPP and the PDM have also announced anti-government long march rallies on February 27 and in late march over government's failure to control rising inflation I'm moving on a massive demonstration was held by political activists and the Sindhi community on Monday on the occasion of the International Mother Language Day accusing Pakistan's federal and provincial government of Sindh of intentionally eliminating Sindhi language from the country the activist of GSS the Mutahida Mahaz or GSM MM demanded Sindhi has been the language spoken in the region for centuries and that the rulers of Pakistan would have to grant it the status of a national language They urged the international community to take notice of the systematic elimination of the Sindhi culture through demographic changes by Pakistan in the region. Sindhi zuban puri duniya ki zubanon ki maa zuban hai jo Pakistan ke ghair fitri jabr ka shikar hai aur Sindh aur Sindhi qoum ke khilaf ye Pakistan aur riyasat ki bahut badi saazish hai ki hamari zuban ko ek munazzam saazish ke tahat khatam kiya ja raha hai. 
And moving on to news from Sri Lanka, long queues of vehicles were witnessed at various petrol stations across Sri Lanka on Monday amid a looming fuel shortage as foreign exchange runs short. The country's energy minister said Sri Lanka is trying to arrange a payment of 35 million US dollars for a shipment of 40,000 tons of diesel with just a few days of stocks left. Long queues of vehicles were sighted at various petrol stations across Sri Lanka on Monday with the country's energy minister warning about a looming fuel shortage as foreign exchange runs short. Sri Lanka is trying to arrange a payment of 35 million US dollars for a shipment of 40,000 tons of diesel with just a few days of stocks left. Energy Minister Udaya Gamanpilla said on Monday, adding that his ministry was in talks with the Finance Ministry and the Central Bank to release the funds. The Energy Minister said that even with the shipment which had reached the port of Colombo on Sunday, the Indian Ocean nation would only have diesel for six days. He said state-run Ceylon Petroleum Corporation has begun to ration distribution in an effort to prepare for the crisis by issuing just about half of what is typically released to pumping stations. <laughs> This comes as the island nation of 22 million people also faces debt repayment obligations of about 4 billion US dollars this year. And opposition leaders and economists are pushing the government to seek assistance from the likes of the International Monetary Fund. And for the first time in over 30 years, Afghanistan's state-owned bread factory, Siloe Markazi, has resumed production this past weekend after it stopped functioning. This is the first ever state-run production entity that has been reactivated since Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan in August last year. Afghanistan's state-owned bread factory Silo Imarkazi or Central Silo, located in capital Kabul, reactivated and resumed production on Sunday after decades of production stoppage. Silo Imarkazi is the first ever state-run production entity that has been reactivated since Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan in mid-August last year. The factory was badly damaged since the 1990s and stopped functioning since 1992. In coming days, it would be fully reconstructed to increase its products. The deal with the Kalipusara Mujwakawala Shul, Chenan Dara Purusa, Yahara Num, Chimaki de Siludur Lodala, Birta Rajwandaik. Kayal said two more branches of Silo are situated in the southern Kandahar and western Herat cities, and authorities would soon buy necessary equipment to fully reactivate the factories. The silo has begun its production with baking 200 kg of flours to make bread and cake daily. The capacity is expected to increase to 5 tons per day in the future. Currently, a total of 130 people, including 12 women, are working in the bakery section of silo. The products are sold in 36 stalls across Kabul. And snowfall has brought back cheer to tourists and locals, particularly the yak owners in India's northern hill station of Kufri. After a sordid COVID-19 phase of two years, yak owners are elated and hopeful as the tourists have again started to throng the hill station in large numbers. After a sordid COVID-19 phase of two years, snowfall has brought back the tourists as well as cheers to locals including the yak owners in India's northern hill station of Kufri in Shimla district. Tourism has been one of the worst industries affected by the coronavirus in India, with frequent restrictions on movement and repeated lockdowns. However, the recent snowfall season in the Himalayas is once again drawing tourists to key destinations with a dialed-down nervousness about the virus. lockdown, the whole business was finished for two years. Everything was इनकम का कोई सोर्स नहीं था सब कुछ खत्म बेचना या कुछ सब बेचने पड़े कुफरी में सर एक्सपेक्टेड नहीं था कि अब तक बर्फ होगी और बर्फ का नजारा एकदम मजा आ रहा है और अभी याक पे जैसा कि आप देख सकते हैं फोटो सेशन हमने करा है बहुत ही मजा आ रहा फर्स्ट टाइम याक पे हम लोग बैठे और स्नो का भी अलग ही तरह का मजा ले रहे हैं याक्स फाउंड अक्रॉस एशियन हाइलैंड्स होल्ड अ कल्चरल सिग्निफिकेंस टू द लोकल्स एंड इज आल्सो लाइक विद ट्रेडिशंस कल्चर्स एंड रिचुअल्स ऑफ द हर्डिंग कम्युनिटीज 
They serve as a tourist attraction among visitors, as a point of curiosity, as well as for those who are looking for a cultural experience. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.